Seattle is perfect for glass blowing. The weather is perfect. It's beautiful. You have the mountains, the sound, the temperate rainforest. I have a true love for plants and flowers, and flora, fauna. My greatest influence is nature. And there's a whole process of the research, the sketches, going out and studying the individual plant or tree or whatever, and then putting it all together. In the beginning, they told me that women didn't do this, and this is in the 80s. And um, when they said you can't do it, of course I had to try it. <laughs> so. Once I become interested in something, I become obsessed with it. I worked for a few years just trying to figure out what makes glass and how does it work and what are your limitations, only to realize there are no limitations. I think that that is what really helped to free me. I really love its fluidity and ability to transmit and reflect light and the fact that I can stop the process at any moment. I don't take a lot of pictures when I'm out doing my studies. I take a sketchbook. I like what my mind's eye is seeing. I like what I think I'm seeing. And so I can sketch that down, but when I take a picture or a photograph, it's exactly the way it is. But I'm not trying to make anything exactly like it is. I'm trying to capture the essence. I like to work with texture because my mother, she's deaf, and then later in life she became blind. And so I like her to be able to feel with her hands to have her sight. I bring her in the studio and say, okay, I'm making a tree, can you feel it? And she would go, Oh yeah, I can feel the knots in the tree. I can feel the flowers. Whatever it is that I want to make, I really have to do a lot of research and just put myself right into it. You just can't predict when that next moment's gonna hit you. Anytime I'm in the forest, I feel like I'm just getting a big hug from Mother Nature. It just embraces you and hugs you, and you can feel relaxed and comfortable. There's no other place I'd rather be.